What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're brewing up one of my favorite beers of all time, which is just an absolute classic and something that you cannot go wrong with any time of year, and that is a Hellas. A good Hellas lager is appropriate in nearly every situation, but especially as we are coming into summer now, this is the perfect time of year, in my opinion, for a Hellas. It is a nice, balanced, easy drinking, crisp, refreshing lager that has that quintessential German character, but it's not too hoppy, it's not too strong, and it drinks by the liter so well. The one we're making today is gonna to qualify probably more as an export beer, uh, which is a slightly stronger version of a Hellas, somewhere between like five and 6%. I'm hoping for about a five and a half percent beer today. It's been a really long time since I've made a Hellas, and I've been craving having one of my own on taps. That's as good of a reason as any to get one brewed up. There is something special about this brew day though, and that is I'm gonna be using for the first time the new Lalamand Nova Lager yeast. So this is a special kind of lager yeast. It's truly Saccharomyces pastorianus that will ferment at a high temperature, something like up to 65 Fahrenheit, just exactly the same way that Saf Lager W3470 has for many, many years. I do want to try it out for the first time today uh, in this brew, so it should be interesting to see how that goes, and it's the perfect kind of yeast for a Hellas. Before we jump into this recipe though, I do want to thank a couple of organizations for helping make the video possible. Firstly, Northern Brewer, they provided all the ingredients for the batch, and you can find the brand new Nova Lager on their website, so check it out when you got some time. Secondly, Clawhammer Supply, and today, because I'm doing a simultaneous brew day with my old ale brew day, um, I'm actually going to be using the 10 gallon 120 volt system, um, which I occasionally still use. Alright, so for our base malt on this one, you're going to be using 8.5 pounds of Vireman Bark Pilsner malt, which is a nice high grade, high quality Pilsner malt from Vireman. I've used it for many a Pilsner before. I've been very happy with it. We're going to add to that one pound of Vireman Pale Munich malt. So Munich is very important in a Helles as it's a more malty beer than something like a Pilsner, for example. So the Helles is going to have a nice deep bready note to it. And I think that's going to come from that pale Munich malt that goes in. This isn't going to affect the color too much, but it will bring about a nice rich breadiness. Next, we're going to be adding a quarter pound of Vireman Melanoidin malt. Melanoidin malt is a great way to simulate a decoction mash in a beer by adding in those melanoidins directly, um, instead of actually taking the time to go do the decoction mash. Decoction mashes are pretty traditional in German brewing, um, but the melanoidin malt is a nice way to get around that, and so we're gonna be adding a small amount of that. That's gonna increase that deep richness to the malt character of this beer, but we don't wanna go overboard on it because it can get pretty intense if you go overboard. And lastly, to adjust the pH, we're gonna be adding a quarter pound of Vireman acidulated malt, which is going to help bring that pH down from where it otherwise would be uh, if we were just using the plain old malts earlier. Um, I'm hoping that we land at about a pH of about 5.2 to 5.3, um, but we'll see what happens. As far as hops go, um, this is not a hoppy beer, but we do want to provide a good bite, a good bitterness to it, and a good balance overall with a nice note of hops on top. So to bitter, I'm just going to be adding about one third of an ounce of Magnum at 60 minutes, and then uh, 10 minutes, we're going to add one ounce of Halletau Mittelfrühe, which is going to give us a really nice floral flavor on top of everything. None of that's going overboard or to a point where this becomes a Pilsner. It's just going to be a nice balanced Helles Lager. For the water profile in this one, I'm targeting a relatively balanced profile overall. Uh, so that profile is going to be 67 parts per million of calcium, 6 parts per million of magnesium, 26 parts per million of sodium, 103 parts per million of chloride, 99 parts per million of sulfate, and 0 parts per million of bicarbonate. And in order to get that water profile, I'm adding in 4 grams of gypsum, 2 grams of epsom, 2 grams of sodium chloride, and 4 grams of calcium chloride to the mash water, which is 8 gallons of spring water. A nice balanced profile like that should really make this a very drinkable beer. We're not trying to push the maltiness. We're not trying to push the hops either, really. This beer is really all about balance and a nice, crisp, clean finish. For the yeast on this one, as I said earlier, we're going to be using the Lalamand Nova Lager. This should get us a nice clean beer, a nice crisp finish, and it should be done relatively fast as well. So, it should be interesting to see how that performs. For the mash on this one, I'm actually going to be performing a step mash uh, for the first time in a while. I want to maximize the fermentability of the wort while still retaining a decent amount of residual sugar for a higher final gravity, around like 10, 10 to 10, 12 ideally. Um, so, in order to make that happen, I'm doing a two-step mash, Hoke Kurtz style, 
Uh, so that's going to be 148 Fahrenheit for 30 minutes and 158 Fahrenheit for 45 minutes. And that's all there is to it. So I'm really excited to get this going. So let's go ahead and jump to the brew day footage. I started off by adding eight gallons of spring water to my 10 gallon claw hammer supply system and started to heat that up to the target mash temperature of 148 for the first step. As this was going on, I measured out my water salts and added those to the kettle, and I also milled out all my grain. As soon as my strike water reached 148 Fahrenheit, I added all of my grist in for the first rest and let it sit there at 148 Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes. 10 minutes in, I pulled a small sample for a pH measurement and I found it to be alarmingly low. It came in under five for pH, which is uh, pretty bad. So, so to correct this, I gradually added small amounts of baking soda to the mash and remeasured pH until it hit about 5.4, which was where it needed to be in the first place. This is probably due to the Vireman acid malt being way, way stronger than anticipated by online calculators. I let the mash sit at 148 for a total of 30 minutes before raising it up to the next mash step of 158 Fahrenheit for a total of 45 minutes. As soon as I completed that second step, I raised it up to 170 Fahrenheit for a mash out. Then I let it sit there at 170 for 15 minutes before pulling out the grain basket and letting that drain for a total of 15 minutes as well. As soon as I pulled the grain basket out though, I set the controller to hit 100% power to just get a jump start on that boil. Eventually I hit the boil and when I did, I added my first bittering addition, which was about one third of an ounce of Magnum and that went in at 60 minutes. I let the boil continue for 50 minutes after this before adding in one World Flock tablet and two and a half grams of yeast nutrient, as well as my 10 minute hop addition, which was one ounce of Halotel Mittelfrühe. I let the boil continue for about 10 more minutes, and then I chilled down to about 65 Fahrenheit for my pitching temperature and transferred into my Brewbuilt X2. At this point, I measured my OG and I found it to be three points higher than planned at 1053 and pitched in my one packet of Nova Lager at 65 Fahrenheit. At this point, I secured the lid on the fermenter. I did not add any additional pressure and I left it to ferment at 65 Fahrenheit. So for the fermentation on this beer, straight up, uh, we're gonna be fermenting this at about 65 Fahrenheit. This is the upper range of what Lalaman recommends for their Nova Lager strain. Um, I wanna really push this and see how estuary it gets at that higher temperature. If it is like 3470, fermenting this at 65 Fahrenheit should take less than a week. Um, it really should be done very, very fast and um, ideally relatively clean. So what I'm gonna be doing, not only in line with tradition, but also with just getting this beer ready quicker, is I'm gonna be spunding it. Basically what that means is when the fermentation starts to hit its last few days, I'm gonna actually add a spunding valve to the fermenter, which is set to about 15 PSI. What this does is it allows for about 15 PSI of pressure to build up inside the fermenter from the CO2 that is produced from fermentation, and anything in excess of that is bled off through a valve. Um, and what this means basically is that I'm gonna to be able to self-carbonate my beer with natural carbonation, which uh, is the way that the Germans do it. It should be interesting to see how this works in terms of making the beer more authentic, but more importantly, it's gonna help get it ready faster. Spunding is kind of like a subset of pressure fermentation, so it's not like um, I'm doing a full-on pressure fermentation. The fermentation at the very beginning will be actually completely uh, unpressurized up until the last like two or three days, basically. It's really just a matter of finding that point where you've got like, five to six gravity points left in the fermentation where you add that spunding valve and that's really all there is to it. Once it's completely carbonated in my unit tank, I'm gonna go ahead and transfer it into a keg and package it up nicely. And then it should be ready pretty much, uh, I'm hoping within about two weeks. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. For alternative yeast on this one, I'd recommend a good Munich lager strain, something like Y yeast 2308, Diamond Lager from Blalaman is a good one. Obviously W3470 is an absolute classic and will work perfectly in this style. One could theoretically also use the YS2206 Bavarian Lager. That's another good one as well. 
You can also use like a Czech lager strain if you want to, or an American lager strain. I mean, Hell is just a relatively ubiquitous beer style, but I think in my opinion, it's in its best form as a German lager. So using a proper German lager strain, a Munich strain, or a Dortmund strain, you could do some really good work with that. Um, so that's what I really recommend. You can also use Lutri Kvaik for this one if you want to, or Skar Kvaik, uh, or Oslo perhaps as well. Uh, if you want to simulate a lager and do a pseudo lager type thing, you can use any clean ale yeast and it's fine. Um, it's just going to be slightly different fermentation temperature for you in those cases. You can also pressure ferment this one with any old lager yeast and that's really a good way to do this, a good method to get a very clean beer fast at a high temperature. And again, you're going to be taking advantage of that spunding and getting that natural carbonation as well. While I don't often do it because it does require a little extra equipment and a little extra prep time, uh, pressure fermentation is absolutely something that I'm a big advocate for, especially in lagers. Um, you can make some really fantastic stuff that way. Anyway, I think I've really pretty much beaten the uh, fermentation topic to death, so if you have anything else you want to add, please drop it in the comments section, and I'll catch you guys in a few weeks when this is all ready, and so until then, cheers. Fermentation for this beer went really very, very well uh, overall, although I did see a relatively uh, higher than planned degree of attenuation on this one. I was expecting a final gravity of like 1010 to 1012, but ended up with a final gravity of 1007, which really turned this into more of a Hellas export beer at 6.1%, as opposed to a traditional Munich Hellas. Due to that water profile though, this does not count as a Dortmunder. The fermentation was indeed really fast. I was actually able to hit that final gravity in five days and confirmed it two days later. So uh, that was actually really impressive. About three days prior to hitting that final gravity though, I did attach a spunding valve to the fermenter and let it naturally carbonate, setting that spunding valve to about 15 PSI to get a good level of natural carbonation in the beer. This is what the Germans do and I figured it would be kind of a fun thing to try, just spunding my lager. Uh, and I can confirm it worked out pretty well. As soon as I confirmed that final gravity though, I cold crashed everything down about 38. I transferred everything over into the keg after about 48 hours of cold crashing and I was able to observe pretty clear beer going into the keg, so that's pretty good. At that point, I put it on tap and let it naturally sit there and lager for the next several weeks. So the beer is called Supernova and it comes in at 6.1% ABV and 22 IBUs. So for the appearance of the beer, it is pouring an absolutely crystal clear, light golden color, or dark straw. Um, it is a beautiful color, actually. It picks up the light wonderfully, and the clarity on it is just absolutely fantastic. It is pouring with a nice, robust white head that sticks around for a little bit, but does fall off after some time. Head retention probably could be a bit better, to be honest, but I'm willing to live with it. Today is a really humid day, so there is a lot of condensation on that glass, but I'm hoping that you can see that clarity because it is an absolutely beautiful beer when it's poured into this kind of glass. All right, so now let's go in for aroma. Ooh. So mostly getting a, um, a nice Pilsner malt aroma and a little bit of kind of like a sulfur note. You know, something pretty uh, characteristic of German lagers is a nice little sulfur touch on the aroma. And we absolutely have that uh, with Nova Lager. So that's pretty cool. The malt aroma on it is very nice and crisp. Feels fresh. Um, and yeah, not really getting too much of a hop aroma. Maybe a hint of it, but um, not much. I mean, granted, this is a very uh, lager-oriented glass here. It's very straight and narrow, so we don't really get too much of a uh, aroma-enhancing uh, characteristic of that. So let's go in for mouthfeel now. It's been a minute since I made a good lager, and this is uh, this is a good lager. Wow. So overall, while it finished relatively dry on paper, it really doesn't feel all that dry. Um, overall, it definitely has a little bit more of a, a body to it. That being said, it is very crisp and it is extremely refreshing and extremely drinkable. 
Carbonation level is relatively high. Um, I think that's about appropriate for what we're looking at here. And uh, overall, just a very refreshing and highly flavorful beer. So let's go into the flavor on this one. Mm. Wow. Yeah, so first of all, this being at about 6% um, technically makes this a Hellas export beer. So it definitely fermented a bit drier than I expected that it would, but uh, that doesn't seem to have really affected the flavor too much. It feels very, very much like a traditional Hellas Lager, and I honestly couldn't tell you if this was 6 or 5% if this was given to me blind. Despite being in the style of a Dortmunder export, this is not an actual Dortmunder because that water profile is not so high in sulfates. Um, so that's different. We'll just call this a generic Hellas export beer just because of that extra uh, percent ABV tacked on there, but overall still feels like a 5% beer and still absolutely perfect for crushing in the summer. So the overall flavor I'm getting is predominantly maltiness, but there is a really lovely, um, just a balance of a hint of hops in this. I'm getting like a really solid amount of honey, uh, very refreshing characteristic there. That maltiness comes through. It's not overpowering. It's not really in any way uh, a problem. It doesn't get in the way of anything else. This is just a refreshing, solid lager. It has that crispiness, that clean character, and it is absolutely everything I want and I need on this hot day right now. There's a slight hint, I think, of a Halitau in there. A little bit of floral character, a little bit of um, maybe an herbal note. Just enough bitterness to balance out the sweet malt, uh, but not too much. Not so much that you notice it unless you're really trying to find it. Uh, really quite a nice characteristic, all things considered, and that yeast has performed phenomenally. This is naturally clarified. This dropped out within a few weeks, just absolutely on its own after sitting in the kegerator about 36 degrees. I did cold crash it, and that definitely helped to get a lot of the yeast and particulates out of the way on the transfer, but overall, the Nova Lager yeast uh, really has performed exactly the same, I think, as W3470 does. It tastes very similar, although maybe, it, maybe it's throwing a little bit more sulfur. I don't know. Um, it's been a minute since I brewed with 3470, so I'm not 100% sure. I'm very, very pleased with this beer. Um, this is a very solid Hellas, even though it's a bit stronger in alcohol. Um, this is an absolutely fantastic summer crusher. This thing's going away so fast, I gotta top it off. The Munich malt in this really gives a phenomenal bready undertone to the whole thing. It gives it so much more character than just plain old Pilsner malt. It doesn't feel thin or watery. It feels substantial, um, but has a lot of really solid deep bready flavor to it. Not bread crust, but just like a hearty bread, um, along with that honey nose that the Pilsner gives. <laughs> like where the Munich malt is concerned, honestly, I would add neither more nor less. That has, that's really dialed in perfectly. There's only a few things I'd adjust in this, and I think the first is the melanoidin malt. I only added a quarter pound, and I think that's fine. That's definitely adding uh, a lot of nice deep richness to this. Um, I think it's just a hair too much. I have a tendency when I'm using melanoidin malt to throw in a hair too much on pretty much every recipe I've used it with. <laughs> um, so I'd maybe dial that back. I think I was at a quarter pound. Maybe I'd drop that down to like two ounces. Um, it's just a little finishing touch. It may not even be necessary with the Munich in there. Secondly, as you saw during the brew day, the vitamin acid malt that I used really threw off the pH quite a bit. It doesn't seem like that had a major effect on the beer because it still tastes absolutely phenomenal. I might have possibly reversed the impact of that by throwing in some baking soda at the last minute. So overall, I've made a Hellas Lager I think three times on this channel and this is by far the best one. Um, even if it's got that extra percent ABV, if you don't want that, try to prevent it from fermenting down as far as mine got or just scale things back a little bit uh, in terms of the recipe. Otherwise, this is just checking every box for me. I am super happy to have this beer. Nothing beats a solid Hellas Lager when you're having backyard barbecues and beach days and just everything you want to do in the summer months. This is your beer. So I'm super pumped to be able to share it with you guys and give you what I think is a really solid recipe and a really solid crack at this style. So I hope you guys enjoy it and I hope you brew one for yourself. 
Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the video, you got something out of it, please go ahead, hit that like button and subscribe as well. These things are very important and I have to say them because I need them for my channel to grow and get uh, exposure to different audiences and people who haven't seen my content before. So please do me a huge favor and just tap the like button. Please also comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are on this beer, on the brew day, on anything. Um, I always enjoy reading the comments, so get to it. If you want to help support the channel, there's a number of different ways to do so. My preferred way, I think, is if you picked up a t-shirt like this one. It's a great way to support me and you get something out of the deal as well, which is always a nice thing. I have a bunch in my merchandise store, so go check that out in the description box. I also have a Patreon and my Patreon supporters are really very helpful in terms of making this channel a better place, growing its production quality and a lot of other things. So big shout out to them, big thank you to them. I also have channel memberships and there's the super thanks button. If you feel inclined to hit either of those things, all of that stuff means a lot to me and I really do appreciate it. I also have an Amazon store which you can find in the description box and it on that store, you can find a lot of homebrewing equipment that I stand behind that's on Amazon, as well as my filming equipment, anything I use for YouTube. If you're curious about that stuff, it's on that store as well. So take a look when you got some time. And last, but certainly not least, I'm also available on Instagram and Facebook as The Apartment Brewer, where I post a lot of content there. Um, if you wanna follow me there, it's a great way to stay informed of what's gonna be coming to the YouTube channel in the future. So please go check that out when you got some time as well. And if you're still here, Thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much for watching all the way to the end. These videos take a lot of work and um, I put a lot of time into making them. So if you're still watching all the way through, it means so much to me and I sincerely, sincerely appreciate it. So this one goes out to you guys. And until the next one, cheers.